About 20 years ago, I tasted my first star fruit. It was a store-bought fruit. Not the perfect fruit to be trying out the first time, but it was delicious and I decided that I wanted to get me a tree and try to grow my own. So I contacted some experts down in Southern California who told me, Jeff, you can't grow those down there in the San Joaquin Valley. You can barely grow them down here in the warmest areas of Southern California. I asked where I could find a tree and I went to a local nursery where I did find one. But the owner of the nursery, also an expert, told me, Jeff, you're just asking for trouble. It'll die the first year in the ground. So I didn't make that purchase. Instead, I took the fruit that I'd gotten in the grocery store, took the seeds out of it, and planted it. 20 years later, the tree is fruiting and actually produces pretty good fruit. We're going to take a look at that tree, but first, if you like this channel, go ahead and hit the like, the subscribe button, the notification bell, and if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I do my best to get back to every comment and question. So let's walk across my yard to the area where I have my 15 foot tall star seedling star fruit in full fruit. So <clears throat> as I mentioned, I was told that Jeff, you aren't going to be able to grow star fruit. It's too cold and the valley's too windy. So I planted a little seedling back here and it's out of the wind, but I noticed we've been having a lot of wind lately. And so I noticed that uh, a couple branches that had broken. So I decided to come back here and lo and behold, some of the fruit is, is actually coming off the tree. Um, so it must be getting close to ripen. So I decided, well, we'll give it a quick video. Take a look at the star fruit I have growing on this tree. Now, I don't want to mislead anybody. Star fruit is a little bit sensitive to the frost when it's young. The tree, the top of this tree occasionally gets damaged by cold and it sometimes gets damaged by the wind because the star fruits are very brittle. Hopefully you can see that because we're in the shade. This tree is pretty big. And as you can see, the our house and the fence is only six feet six feet uh, away from each other and uh, here we go take a look here is the um, the trunk it's probably about a foot in diameter or so and the tree itself is about 15 16 feet tall as you can see <laughs> it's loaded with fruit hopefully it's clear there we go Pro it a lot of it blew off in the windstorm. I want to say it probably had only about uh, the fall harvest is probably so far, probably about 10 or 15 pounds. But uh, hey, <laughs> 10 or 15 pounds is better than none. So we had a couple fruit fall off. And here we go. I'm going to give this a try. As you can see, this is genuine star fruit. This is not artificial star fruit that somebody might have su suggested. This is not a peach. This is not a star shaped peach. It is a, look at that, juicy. So we're going to taste, ta do a quick taste test and I'll let you know if star fruit is worth growing in the San Joaquin Valley. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to be honest with you. This is a sweet, if not way sweeter, I, I would say way sweeter than grocery store star fruit. Very juicy. You see, here in the valley, star fruit ripens in October, same time as my tropical guavas. And it's still warm. We're in the 80s during the day, and 50s at night, though we've been a little bit cooler lately. Wow, that is very good. So, when somebody tells you that you can't grow something because they don't understand your microclimates, it's worth a try. Very sweet. Wow. My name is Jeff. If you like this channel, go ahead and hit the like, the subscribe button. 
the notification bell. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I do my best to get back to everybody. You have a great day.